two things came together for this week's video. The first is that I had several questions from viewers about how to buy an RV, and I think it was particularly about how to buy a Class B RV. And the second one is that this is the week of the California RV Show in Fontana, California. So on a very warm day, last Saturday, John and I drove the 60 miles out to Fontana to get some tips for you on how to buy an RV. <laughs> this is Dean. What's your last name? Rumpel. Dean Rumpel from Pleasure Way. He's the president. And uh, he's, we just gone over a whole bunch of things, learned the, what's new on the 2020 versus our 2018. And uh, so we're going to um, video that. And then if we have more questions, we're going to come back to you. Cause... I'm here all day. That's excellent. Thank you, Debbie. He, and John. He, knew, he knows all the technical stuff. We which... can help with whatever we can. And if I can't find the answer, I'll find it for you. Okay. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Now, the show actually ends tomorrow. So if you're watching this video on the day I upload, which is Saturday... I don't know what date it is. Uh, the, day, the show goes on for one more day so if you want to go. Now, I'm not an expert on buying RVs, but after two years of owning this rig and traveling over 33,000 miles, including the Alaska Highway, I have a few ideas of my own that I shot, thought I'd share with you. Like many of you, I started out watching YouTube videos um, of other people RVing in all kinds of vehicles, small, large, uh, vans, whatever it was, uh, until we settled on our Pleasure Way Ascent. And we are frequently asked whether we like the choice that we made. Did we make the right decision? Or would we have chosen a different vehicle now looking back two years? Well, the short answer is yes. We are very happy with the rig that we chose, but with one caveat. We humans suffer from quite a few cognitive biases, including one called the choice supportive bias, whereby we tend to rationalize the decisions we make and persuade ourselves that we've made the right decision. So that's the caveat, and just remember that anytime you ask someone who has a rig uh, whether they're happy, you're going to get a bias. And I know it can seem like a daunting task, especially when you're uh, at an RV show because there are just so many options. You're surrounded by options and you kind of get paralyzed in those options. Neil at Ultramobility did a video a while ago on, on how to buy an RV and he created um, a structure, kind of a matrix that you can follow when you're trying to make that decision. And so I will link his video below. And mine's um, really quite different, uh, but his, his matrix is really helpful. So I encourage you to watch that. So today I've kind of come up with 10 steps to, uh, to help you in making that decision. And I think as you go through these steps and as you examine more and more options, I think the fog will lift and you'll at least uh, be able to make a choice. And down the road, you, like me, will rationalize the decision that you made. Now, you do need to understand that you will have to make compromises because there is no perfect choice for you. And I think that's why most people say that the first RV that you buy is never your last. So tip number one, you first have to examine your own mindset and those of the people that you're going to be traveling with. And that includes your pets, if you can examine their mindset. After last week's video about traveling with pets, um, I heard from a number of people that their pets were not necessarily happy campers. So definitely consider your pets. So examine your strengths and weaknesses. And by that I mean um, understand points of friction that you have at home with another person are likely going to be magnified in a small space like this van. And you need to ask, is this other person totally on board? My brother has a funny way of kind of describing people. Um, but in this situation, I think he would say, ask whether they are indoor putty tats or outdoor putty tats. Or is it just somebody who needs a little bit of time to warm up to this idea of RVing? 
So if that's the case, then I think you have a chance and you can work on warming them up to the idea because you both need to be on board unless you plan to leave the other person at home while you do the traveling. One way to do that is to start to take them to RV shows if you can. Um, or maybe you can pick out some of your favorite RV YouTubers and get them to watch these videos with you and kind of get them interested that way. But you do need to give yourself and the other person a to uh, some time to absorb this idea. And keep an open mind about the kind of vehicle and your own partner's needs. So the second thing you need to do is to uh, examine your expectations. For example, do you plan on taking this thing off-road or do you prefer to stay in campgrounds with full hookups? Do you like to stay in one place for a long period of time or do you like to keep moving you know, day after day or maybe two days in one spot? How often do you plan to use the vehicle? Is it for tailgating? Do you plan to use it at, to go to the beach or maybe as a mobile office? Um, do you have long weekends that you plan to spend uh, you know, on the road? Are you planning on a long trip across the country or up to Alaska? Do you consider yourself a minimalist or your partner, are they minimalists? And, uh, or are they able to kind of handle living with a very minimal amount of things? You also need to look at how you handle technical issues that come along. Are you expecting to find a mechanic everywhere you go? Or are you good at sleuthing problems and then solving those problems? Do, when problems do come up, do you kind of get upset about them? Uh, do problems drive you over the edge? Uh, so those are also things that you really need to consider about yourself and your partner. You'll want to consider uh, what dealer you're going to be buying this from and getting it serviced. And it's not just the upfitter, but it's also the chassis. So in our case, it's a Mercedes chassis. Do you have a dealer near you or will you have to drive it a long ways? Now, we actually don't take it to the Mercedes dealer for our oil changes and things like that. So that's absolutely not essential. Number three is where do you expect to store this vehicle? There are lots of communities and homeowner associations that forbid the parking of RVs. And in California, state law defines an RV as basically any vehicle with a sink. So even a Volkswagen bus like a Westphalia, a Westphalia would be forbidden in uh, some communities. So that's something you want to understand because storing your vehicle is a huge consideration and you also need to consider the logistics of the situation of loading and unloading and how much time that takes and whether you're going to be wanting to work on it at home. Um, that was a big consideration for us and I think it would have been a game changer if we could not have been able to park it on our driveway. The fourth step is to uh, list your priorities, your must-haves and your nice-to-haves. For me, the deal breakers were things like the bathroom, uh, the solar system, the safety equipment, and the storage of the vehicle itself. We had a year before John retired, and we actually drove up to Fresno to tour the sportsmobile factory. And one of the biggest reasons we didn't go with the sportsmobile was because of the bathroom. I did not want a cassette toilet and I did not want to have to deal with emptying that and so that to us was uh, what put us off of the sportsmobile. With the solar system I wanted to make sure it had lithium batteries and not AGM because I didn't want to worry about depleting the batteries to a certain level and damaging the batteries. So now I would like to go through some of the things that might be on your list of priorities. I will put a list of these things down below so you can refer to them. Uh, the first thing on the list was the bathroom and the shower. Now there is a shower inside of our bathroom but I never expected to use it because it's quite small. We do however use the outside shower quite a bit. Now along with the shower something important is hot water. I wanted, it wasn't maybe a must-have but it was a would like to have a, an on-demand hot water heater and that's turned out to be really quite nice. You don't have to wait very long and you don't have, uh, take, you don't have a tanks um, taking up space storing hot water. You'll want to consider the chassis and its capabilities. Now we have the Mercedes chassis 
And one of the things I really like about it is we drive a lot in the mountains, and so we're going up and down passes frequently. I really like the uh, the use of the, you know, be, being able to use the engine as a compression brake uh, for those passes. And uh, I'm not sure that that, you know, on what, what other chassis that is available. I'm sure they all have the ability to turn the overdrive off, but I'm not sure that they have uh, anything further than that. You'll definitely want to understand the warranty and what it covers. Now, our warranty on this vehicle is five years, but that does not cover the components like the refrigerator and water heater and all these things that are made by other manufacturers. That warranty, the five-year warranty, is, is covers everything that is built by Pleasure Way. So the individual components will have their own warranties uh, based on what the manufacturer specifies. Along with the consideration of the chassis and which one you're going to go with is, of course, the fuel that, that makes it go. Is it going to be diesel or will it be gasoline? Of course, the Mercedes runs on diesel. We have not found any issues finding diesel gas in the U.S., well, in any places we've traveled. I only know of one state where I don't think you can find it at all, and that is Minnesota. I could be wrong, but there I think it's the 20% biodiesel that they're offering. And I don't know if that's an issue, but a lot of people say it is and claim that Mercedes will not warrant uh, the vehicle if you're using a 20% biofuel. Do you want four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive? Uh, in our case, we got the two-wheel drive. That was one of the things that interested us about Sportsmobile was being able to get a four-wheel drive. But it turns out that uh, the suspension upgrade that we did to this vehicle gives us everything that we would have wanted in a four-wheel drive vehicle. There's no way I would want to take this 11,000-pound beast on, on you know, terrible uh, dirt roads with huge boulders and that sort of thing. That's just not our style. Maybe it's yours, but it's not ours. And the suspension package that we purchased after market uh, has solved uh, the problem with the, both the, um, the better ride of this vehicle, as well as giving us an extra uh, three and a half inches of lift in the back and two and a half inches in the front. Air conditioning is uh, something most people are interested in. That was really not an issue for us because we tend to travel. Uh, we, you know, if it's too hot, we will go and find some place that's cooler. Uh, we've only used the air conditioner in this thing twice, and it has to be uh, on shore power or I guess with the generator on to use the uh, the air conditioner, and we find it quite noisy. And that's going to be the case for just about every vehicle, every Class B that you find. I've only heard of one air conditioner that is uh, quieter, and that's the one that is supplied by Advanced RV and their super expensive uh, vehicles that they, they do, their custom vehicles. I think they're in Ohio. And I think it's the same air conditioner that, that George at Humble Road purchased for the, um, the, these custom vans that he's building. TV and stereo is certainly not an issue for us. Uh, we really didn't care if it came with either of those things. However, we do find ourselves using the TV to, um, to hook our iPads to. So we've already downloaded entertainment, and then we hook it through a dongle into the television screen. So we do use it that way, but we've never used the Blu-ray player. Um, so that, wasn't a, that was not an issue for us in, in a, making a purchase. Storage is a huge issue for most people. Uh, and I admit, this 144-inch uh, this Mercedes chassis has very little storage in it. But as time has gone on, we've found that we need less and less. And the less we travel with, um, that, that less stuff that travels with us, the happier we are. So we've been able to uh, continue to get rid of stuff. And then we've actually found extra storage, like we did in the cab. Uh, the cab shelf that was added to the, the front, and that has really been a game changer for us. Along with the chassis comes certain safety features, and that was an important consideration for me. Uh, I wanted lane assist, and the Mercedes had the lane assist. Yeah, they have the, the um, backup camera, which is not so great. Uh, I don't like the backup camera, but at least there is one. Oh, and the visibility was a huge issue. Uh, Pleasure Way puts all of their cabinets, the refrigerator, bathroom, all of that stuff behind the, the driver's side and not the passenger side, 
which is a huge blind spot if you have stuff covering this area. So I really liked that layout. Uh, tank size wasn't a big deal for us either. I know that we can uh, economize on water. Uh, we're pretty frugal with that, so I did not consider that to be an issue. And we can go for five days easily on the 18-gallon tank. I think it's 18 gallons, or is it 20? 20, 22. <laughs> I'll put that in there. Uh, anyway, we can easily go on one tank of fresh water uh, and not have a problem. Mosquito netting. Uh, I didn't really consider mosquito netting before we purchased this, but when we saw the mosquito netting in this vehicle, it's like, wow, this is awesome. So, um, uh, so that, that I think should be a consideration because I think it's really important. Everywhere you go has bugs. The ease of dumping um, is a nice thing. The, uh, I know some other rigs have what they call macerators for the black tank. This one is just gravity and it makes it super easy. I remember back in 2017, I think it was, when I was watching one of Neil's very first videos, I actually asked him if he would do a video on how to empty the tanks. And he did, and, uh, and of course, it, it's super easy. Another thing to consider is resale value. Um, some manufacturers' equipment has higher resale value than others, so you might want to do some research on that issue if that's important to you. The, obviously, the comfort of the bed and the seating uh, should be considered. You'll want to lie down on the bed and spend some time. Uh, how comfortable is it? We find the, the cushions here to be extremely comfortable, and we just sleep uh, basically straight on our cushions with just a sheet on top of them. And then, of course, the seats in the front, because you spend an awful lot of time driving, and you want to make sure that those seats fit you one of the reasons we did not get the Lexor uh, was because the, the seat on that Ram chassis would just didn't fit John's stature, and he's six foot five, so understandable. We all seem to want to carry all of our toys all the time, but that's just not possible. You can't carry bikes and kayaks and, you know, and everything else you can think of in a very small rig, so you have to make some compromises there. Uh, we did want to be able, though, to take a bicycle and a spare tire. Um, so we have now found a way that we can take our electric bikes and um, have a spare tire on the back. And so that's an upcoming video. It's going to be installed in a couple of weeks. So stay, stay tuned for that. Number six is to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. So if you're looking at a Mercedes 144-inch chassis, make sure that you look at the other manufacturers in that same category um, because um, you know you're not going to obviously some chassis are more expensive and uh, every length is different one of the things you want to understand is the OCCC the Occu occupant cargo carrying capacity number because the manufacturers start with the chassis and it's they they all weigh the same thing uh, 11,030 pounds, I think it is, for our vehicle. And then they add on to that. And what is left over uh, from what they add is what you can carry with you in terms of water and food and gear and bodies. So that's something that you definitely want to compare apples to apples on and understand what it really means. Number six is you want to pick a floor plan. Um, everybody kind of lays things out a little bit differently. Some beds you can only basically sleep in sideways and obviously that wouldn't work for a tall person. Um, this van allows John to have his feet hanging over which he finds perfectly acceptable. Um, there also is a setup here for two twins uh, which wouldn't work for us but w does work for other people. Um, so uh, pick a floor plan that works for you. As I mentioned, Pleasure Way puts their view blocking equipment on uh, the driver's side of the van, which is nice because it gives, it kind of eliminates that blind spot that you would otherwise have over here on the passenger side. And for me, that was an important consideration, knowing that I would be driving this vehicle a lot of the time. Uh, number seven is to try on the vehicle if you can. If you can rent one, that's, that's the best. Uh, but if you can't, make sure that you spend some time lying down on the bed, 
really getting a feel for how comfortable it is. Make sure you sit in the seats and make sure that those are comfortable to sit in because you're gonna spend a lot of time behind the wheel and someone else sitting in the passenger seat. And make sure that both, that all parties sit on the toilet and the bathroom to make sure that it fits. Now we knew that the shower was not gonna work for us. It's a very tiny space. John's a big guy, uh, but we, but we also knew it had an outdoor shower that would probably come in handier for our situation. Number eight is to examine the build quality. There is a reason that RVs are priced differently. You really do get what you pay for. So uh, if you're gonna, if you don't pay much for a, a class B, it's probably because of the build quality. So examine it, look under the cushions, look in the cupboards, what kind of hardware do, you, do they use? Are things really tied down? Because as other people have said, every time you drive this, it's like you've got an earthquake going on inside the vehicle. And so things are gonna loosen up. We did not have anything fall off or break in the in the vehicle on our trip to Alaska and that is that is really saying something. We did speak to people who had in other vehicles who had things falling off all over the place and were not happy campers. But if you don't intend to drive it on rough roads and and uh, things like that, maybe it doesn't matter as much to you. Number 9 is to eliminate the bad options. You can probably pretty quickly, you know, just strike certain things off of you know out of the options and just eliminate them and focus narrow down on those things that really interest you but you also need to realize that there is no perfect choice there is no perfect vehicle for you even if you have one custom built i guarantee you it will not be perfect uh, there will be things that come up and you go oh i wish i'd known that or i wish i'd known this and the truth is that until you've actually lived in a vehicle for a while and traveled with it, that's when you start to understand what you need, what you want. And, um, and that really opens up opportunities for you to make those upgrades that fit and suit your needs. If you've ever had that experience of building a house and then 10 years later remodeling it, then you know what I mean. You think that when you're building a custom house, everything's gonna be there. But the truth is until you live in it, uh, you just won't know. And then finally, you're probably going to want to bounce some of these things off of other people. So try to find people who already have an RV, they've RV'd for years, uh, maybe they have the same rig. You can probably find forums online where you can ask questions and get some um, satisfaction uh, and understanding and maybe feel a little less nervous about uh, this big decision that you're going to make. I know that there are people out there who, who are watching this already have rigs. You've probably thought of things I've forgotten. So please put those in the comments below. And if you have any additional advice, please add that on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. It's been a fun, this has been a fun show.